So one of the many advantages of living in Exeter is the fact that when you want to go for a run, I can this morning, you get to run by the quayside in the river. So exercise is kind of becoming more of an important part of my schedule recently. I think partly it's just like a way to think about the PhD, not in the office, because this is good thinking time. But also weight loss, as I talked about before, and it's going up to summer. I don't want to. I don't want to be that fat guy in pictures next to Liv. You know, she's gonna look hot. I gotta look hot too. So hence. 10k run first thing on a Wednesday. Whew. This is the tail end of the run. This is double locked pub. Halfway. Now there's a reason to go for a morning run next to absolutely beautiful morning. Not my fastest performance ever on a 10k, um, but I wasn't really going for speed. Also, I was kind of aching from yesterday because had to try and keep pace with Liv for the entire time we were swimming and she's she's a really fast swimmer. <laughs> Incidentally, if you are a runner, running with Bluetooth headphones so you don't have to worry about the cables jangling around and having your phone on your arm in like a strap. Oh, it's like a dream. Highly, highly recommend getting a pair of like cheap Bluetooth headphones. It makes such a difference. So this morning I've been poking around in the stuff I did yesterday and kind of tweaking little improvements. Um, the main thing I'm doing today is rewriting the meat of the inversion software that I've written um, in Fortran. Up until now it's been in Python which completes um, the kind of resolution that I'm running at. It does about 50 iterations in about two minutes, which is pretty slow. Um, the same software that's written in Fortran will probably do about two and a half thousand iterations uh, in 10 seconds. So I'm definitely saving a lot of time in the long run by doing this, but it's the first kind of big program I've written in Fortran rather than just going in and tweaking what someone else has written. So that's pretty cool. Fortran's quite a weird language. There's actually a, li a limit on how long individual lines can be because it's, it's a relatively low level um, language, uh, which yeah, I th I, it's, it's like, it's this number, I'll put it on the screen, this, this many characters long. And if you want to carry on a line, then you have to put a, a character like a one on a, on a specific column of the next line. And then that tells the compiler that, oh yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not done yet. For those who ask, I do all my coding in Sublime Text uh, 3 now. It's Sublime Text, um, which I highly recommend for coding. Um, get the full version. It's, it's genuinely one of those things that's worth buying the license for. So that was a pretty successful afternoon of Fortran, actually. I, yeah, I had a bit of a wobble in terms of confidence about the project uh, earlier again today, which is like the fifth time this week. But um, that actually was really good. Definitely feel like things are ticking over and fingers crossed tomorrow, I'm gonna add the new stuff to the Fortran script that I added to Python earlier this week. And um, we'll see what that does. And now it's time for a date with a girlfriend. Guess which one of us went for a run this morning? <laughs> and here we are again. It's like I never left. I don't. I don't think they thought this through. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> Who'd buy that? <laughs> So seeing as it's such a nice morning, Liv and I thought we'd take the scenic route to work, um, which means going through this valley that's right by uni, but it's all right, I guess. It's pretty nice. <gasps> Hello, boy. I took the photo for Chapel Choir's debut album in a field up there at like four in the morning. Happy memories. Something that I don't know if I've ever talked about is just how pretty campus is. Particularly in summer, um, Exeter used to be, um, like the campus was an arboretum, which is like a tree, uh, tree zoo. 
they're really easy to keep in enclosures but yeah like it's so so green uh, the whole campus is absolutely beautiful and particularly in summer like picnicking out here is pretty great All oh, right, it is just gone past half six. I've been in the office since uh, nine, just before nine. Really productive day, actually. I've been coding um, in Fortran and um, adding in functionality. Today, I want to talk about something which I've been asked about a couple of times, which is uh, the apps and software that I use in my PhD. So I've already mentioned that I write on uh, in Sublime Text while I'm doing coding, um, which I highly recommend if you're coding. I code uh, up my thesis in LaTeX, uh, which is by far the industry standard um, for doing science, well, certainly Earth Sciences PhD. Um, the idea of doing my PhD in like anything else just makes me feel sick. And I code that in Kyle, um, which I think is free. Uh, it's a really cool text editor with LaTeX port. Um, other than that, though, um, I use Mendeley, uh, for bibliography management, which I find phenomenally useful um, because you know you can access your papers anywhere and it generates a bibliography for you. You don't have to worry about like the um, BibTeX uh, link. I also use Dropbox to keep hold of all of my code um, and it, that acts as version control and it also means I can work on stuff from anywhere, like I can work on stuff from home or in the office. Um, or if I'm really desperate, I can check a figure on my phone. Then in addition to those, which are like the, the meat of kind of what, what I use, um, I tried using Todoist, uh, which is a Tom Frank recommendation. Um, I, I find it just isn't really for me. But then again, I haven't been terribly productive recently, so maybe I should be reusing it. Um, I prefer manual to-do lists, but you know, um, when I used it, it was useful, along with an app co um, called Tomato Timer, I think it was called, as like Pomodoro Technique, um, which is an app that I used for a bit. Um, I'll include links to all these down there if you want to check them out. Um, again, that, I'm not using it at the moment, but in the past that's worked for me. Slack is another app, um, actually, that the team here uses, um, where the whole research group is on a Slack, and there are different channels for, like, you know, if you have a coding problem, if you have, um, like, requests to look through something, like a bit of physics, um, and that's quite useful, actually. Actually, um, I feel like that like Slack is a pretty pretty cool service. That but I don't know, is that a professional thing? Do, do you use Slack? But that's kind of it as far as software goes. Um, uh, you know, there's only so many things you can do to boost your productivity. Um, at the end of the day, for me, it comes down to writing computer code, which represents physics. So in order to do that. I use Sublime. That's basically what all my time is spent in. Um, also, for the th how many times I've answered this question, yes, I use Ubuntu um, uh, because it's free and I only had a certain budget for my laptop and I don't want to have to pay for a license. And also because it's a chance to learn the operating system uh, and this way I'm much more versed in sort of how computers work. Um, with Windows, you're always a little bit insulated from it. Um, so yeah, I use Ubuntu and it's not a dual boot. It's, it's just pure free stuff. <laughs> Seriously though, what the hell is going on here? You're meant to match. I mean, you, you spatially match, but what the hell is this? I want 300 degrees, not 9,600. Come on. It's been a long day, so I'm gonna get an early night. Um, <laughs> very early. Thanks, Dan. No, no. Because lol, JK, we're going off to see the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Yee. We're on board the Red October currently. We're at DEF CON <laughs> Simply red stuff. Apparently my phone really doesn't like this light, so we'll cut to us talking about the film after it's happened. In now. now, what did you think? Oh, I thought that was really, really good. I think I enjoyed that more. One of the things that I said that took Simon by surprise on the walk home was the last midnight experience we had in that very screen. Yeah. Um, was uh, Rouge, Rouge 1. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I thought this was much better. Just as a view, it's, you mean you, you likened it to comparing apples and oranges because they're they very are different films. Totally yeah, yeah. different films, tonally different, visually different. St as a you know storytelling, completely different. However, if you kind of, I uh, the way I did it was I kind of dulled it down and basically said without analysing it and thinking too much about it, you go to the cinema to view something that you enjoy. Ideally, you want a piece of entertainment, right? And this was more enjoyable. I just I, I found it. I felt more. I laughed more. Um, it was. I am more. <laughs> oh, I am Groot by comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it was a good film. Um, it wasn't great. 
Um, as we, we had a, because for full disclosure, we live like two minutes from the cinema. Um, so on our brief walk back, we already agreed that, yeah, it wasn't great, but it was good. But also that parts of it, components of it were excellent. Um, I think the humour in particular, mm. I was laughing a lot. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I said I would, I mean, without, I may, might change my opinion after kind of giving it more thought, <laughs> but coming out at the moment, I'd give it, I'd score it pretty comfortably with, a 7.9. So, you know, the issue I found, interestingly, that you, you said that you felt there was a um, inconsistency in tone, mm. which I understood. I think that given it's Guardians of the Galaxy, tonally it's, so, it's such a broad spectrum of stuff, you know. Um, that's what makes it so great to watch. But the only thing that I felt for me was the pacing was a little, might have been a little bit off in, mm. the, in, the, you know, in the, final, the final third of the film felt way, way faster. It's like they were trying to kind of tie up loose ends really, really quickly and you kind of like bam, 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 you know. I felt like the whole thing with the pacing, was, I felt like the whole film was stretched, actually. I felt like there wasn't enough material to cover a full film. Um, there were, you know what? Should we end this bit in the vlog now? If, should we just film a whole segment to put on Sponge in Electric and we can just talk about the film for 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna upload this on Spongy and Electric. If you want to see that, there's a link. That's our second channel, by the way. Well, there's a link down there. See you in a bit. Me personally, I love this. Yeah. <laughs>